to determine yourself the exact value at the beginning, at the top of the layer and at the bottom of the layer. And the interpolate allows you to in linearly interpolate the pore pressures from the uh, soil layer that is above and the soil layer that is under. So that's typically done for soil layers that we don't have information. Uh, let's say a soil or somewhere uh, deep down in your subsoil, you have no information about it, but you know the information for the soil layer above or the soil layer beneath it. And then we can just assume that given the pore pressure above and the pore pressure below, the distribution along among this, uh, between these two layers will be some type of linearly interpolated. Um, all the settings we'll see them also in the flow condition, so no worries if, if, if you don't um, remember them uh, straight away, but we will repeat things also during the presentations. We'll see them also later on in the, uh, in the demo. Another thing that is possible to determine uh, in the uh, soil layer stab sheet is the initial conditions. And by initial conditions, what do we mean? We mean, of course, the over consolidating uh, ratio, over consolidation ratio, the pre overburden pressure, that's the ones that we call OCR and POP, and of course, the K naught values uh, that will be used for the K naught procedure, as you will see later on. And that is one of the ways to generate the initial stress state of the model. Um, so you can determine, uh, to, to summarize for this one, you can determine, first of all, the thickness of the layers, the water conditions for that specific borehole and the uh, assigned soil layer, and also some uh, initial conditions for that specific soil layer. As we'll see also later on, there are different ways to achieve the same things uh, with Plaxis, but that's the first step. We know the information about the soil layer, we provide it directly in soil mode. Um, the most important thing, of course, is um, the constitutive models that we, we have in order to, to simulate the behavior of the actual soil or rock that we have out there. Um, the materials um, is, is yet another of those icons uh, on, the, uh, on the side toolbar that you'll see. And by clicking on that icon, I'll show you also that one later on, uh, you will get a pop-up window with the material sets that you have already defined. If you have none, it will be empty, but it is very easy uh, to create one. And this is the window where we'll store the materials for um, all the available objects that we have. So it's not only for soil, of course, but it's also for the interface, for plates, for geogrids, the anchors, the embedded beams. As you'll see, we have different um, elements that you will be uh, using. Uh, one is, of course, to simulate the soil or the rock behavior, but then we have the structural elements. But this materials window contains the information about all of them. So all the material information will be stored in one place so you can easily find it. And when you want to create one, well, you just hit the button new, you will get a new pop-up window starting um, by determining the name, as we'll see also later on, and some information. What information is provided? Well, first of all, apart from the name, which constitutive model do you want to use? There are uh, a big, there's a big list of constitutive models that Plaxis provides uh, to everyone, uh, which uh, can help you simulate better the, 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 the soil or the rock that you have in, uh, in reality. Um, this is where we will define whether the conditions based on the analysis that we are executing, of course, uh, will be drained or undrained. This is also can be determined uh, in the material set here. And of course, all the important information, the unit weight, the permeability values, the stiffnesses, uh, parameters that are needed for determining the behavior of the soil, the strength, all the important information that are needed to determine how that specific material will behave as close as to what do we have in reality. This is where we will provide all the information. And after you, you um, create this material, well, then we need to assign it to a, a specific uh, area, right? So um, um, it, is, it is important to, to, of course, once you create it, you will assign it. Before I explain that, because it's, it's also nice to know that um, Plaxis uh, uses the materials, uh, of course, per project, but it is possible to have the, um, the materials passed into some global library that is stored there in order to be used for another project. And that is very easily done simply by uh, by having the uh, by hitting the icon uh, at the top of this material window, which is to show the global. And then what you will see is that there will be a, an extra uh, extension of this window where you can drag and drop or use the button to copy the materials to the global database. Global database means that 
any person that has access to that computer, to your computer or yourself or any other colleague of yours, will be able to drag those materials from the global database back to the specific project. So you can reuse the material that you have created in any of the projects that you will have in the future. So that's a nice way to uh, to store things so you don't have to recreate the material models over and over again. You don't have to store them in a separate place. Pluxis, make sure that it is there and it is uh, easy to access. Um, I start mentioning, of course, how to assign the materials. So once you create the assigned materials, whether you create them yourself or you you copy it from the global database that you have already created, it is very easy to, to, to do it. You can just click on the material directly from the material database, hold the left mouse button, and just drag it into your model or into this, uh, the, the soil layers uh, definition where we have the window in the beginning or directly at the borehole interpretation that we have in that window. So. It works really easy. There is also another way I will show you through the uh, explorers, but this is just the simplest thing that you can do. Just drag the material directly onto your model, and then you will see that it will take also the color uh, of the uh, material model that you have assigned. So if it is green, it will become green. Um, by this, we consider that we have finished by defining everything that has to do with the history of the area that we 